Good morning. Welcome to service here at Covenant. We're so glad that you could come and be in worship with us this morning. The ushers have already passed out the sign-in tablets. If you would take just a few moments and register your attendance with us and if any of your information has changed, go ahead and update that. And I need to also add legibly. Apparently we have a lot of doctors that uh, come to this church has told me that they can't always read what we write. That's why I try not to write too much. A <clears throat> uh, couple of things coming up. First of all, the board of the staff and everybody wants to wish you a very happy new year. We hope that you've already had a great Christmas. Uh, we can tell by some of the pews that a lot of people are tra traveling this morning and or they're still wet. <clears throat> I don't know about y'all, but I'm ready to not be waterlogged anymore. But I also want to call your attention to the fact that a couple of things coming up. There's not going to be any services Wednesday. Um, regular church service on Wednesday night will resume next Wednesday, which is the 6th of January. And JR will start a new series, Nine Secrets in Building Healthy Relationships. The first one is going to be uh, the Fruits of the Spirit. He's coming from Galatians with this. So it's a great time to come. If you don't want to come on Wednesday night, come in the first part of this series and start to learn how to build better relationships. But coming up this week is our annual chili cook-off that we always have on New Year's Eve. And that's the chili cook-off is going to be at 7. They're going to have games and about 9.15 until it's about time, and then they're going to come over to the sanctuary and have a service at 11.15 to ring in the New Year through service. Also coming up, um, there's a baptismal Sunday coming on January the 10th. Um, if you want to rededicate or be rebaptized or be baptized for the first time, please let Joe know, uh, that way they can baptismal pool filled up and hopefully they won't cook JR like they tried to last time. <laughs> Glenn's reading room is coming back on January the 9th and the 23rd. If you have any questions or anything, see Judy right back there. And she also told me the other day that you do not have to have read the book to come and be a part of the discussion. She said, you are welcome. They'll tell you about the book when you get there. And it might even interest you so much, you start reading the book after you leave. Uh, Connections is going to be on January the 10th. Uh, so everybody in um, the Welcome Center out there, just sign the cards. Roxy's Room is going to be on January the 16th. And if you have any questions about that, wave your hand, Ron. There's Ron. He can tell you all about that. Lighthouse will be going on every Sunday. They did not take a break during this time, so they can... You can still go to Sunday school. Let's see if I... Oh, office hours. Joe would kill me if I forgot this. If you need anything from the church office, they're open Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday of this week. They're closed Thursday and Friday for the holiday, like last week. Our upper room prayer report, praise reports, I'll speak in a minute. One, we had a wonderful Christmas Eve candlelight service. And two, we had the... We got to celebrate yet another year with the birth of Jesus Christ as our hope, peace, joy, and love for everyone. So let's say thanks for those wonderful <laughs> prayers. Our staff member on duty today is Deacon Tim Key. Our board member on duty is Ms. Kay DeMint. If you have any questions or any needs, please feel free to see one of those. They'll be happy to help you any way they can. And there will not be any children's church today. Covenant birthdays for this week, Connie Watkins is on the 20th, John Lynch is on the 24th, Demora Howard is the 25th, and Alicia Griffin is on the 26th. Let's wish them a happy birthday. Was that last week? Okay. Well, we're just going to pretend like it's this week. <laughs> well, I've already talked about Wednesday Night Supper coming back on the 6th, and let's say thank you. We have a couple of special thank yous to Diana McKinley and Jonathan Harrison for their tireless, dedicated work that they do maintaining the church books. That's one of the things you never see them do that, but they work very hard at it. 
And also for another group of people that you don't ever get to see, but you sure do miss them when they're not here, and that's our 3C media team. We want to thank them for their great work that they do.
Jesus Christ, who has made us all brothers and sisters by his loving grace, please join me in praying our prayer of invocation. Loving God, we invite you into our worship this Holy Family Sunday that we might be reminded how great our joy truly is and how strong our faith can be. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Today we light that the Christ candle. Last Sunday we lit the Christ candle, I mean the Advent candle. On this Holy Family Sunday, the first Sunday after Christmas, we light the Christ candle separately for the last time. The lighting of the Christ candle on this day is lit to remind us that the light of a star that led the Magi to the Christ child and to also remind us to lift our hearts in praise for him today. Let it do likewise for us in 2016. Will you join me now? We light the Christ candle, praying that the light of Christ will be with us throughout the new year dawning in 2016. our prayer book that's kept on the pedestal as you come in the front doors, front doors of the church. And recorded in it are the prayers and the praise reports that have come in either by somebody taking time to write them down or maybe they've come in through word of mouth. And typically on any given Wednesday you can find a group of people at 630 in the pastor study. But now in the last week and this week because of the holidays they haven't met. But that does not mean they have not prayed because either Jamie or Judy have collected the list and sent them through email and they are still being prayed for. It's often said this is one of the most important things that we do here at this church. But sometimes you may have a need that's so deeply personal that you don't feel like sharing it in there. But there's no doubt in my mind 
that God knows each one of our unspoken requests. But we take just a moment to lift our hand to God, to remind ourselves that He is still in control, far greater than we could ever be. So if you have an unspoken prayer request this morning, just lift your hand to God. As we go to prayer, I'm going to ask, uh, come on up, baby. Yeah, Michael, that's it. Lord, I'm acting like JR, and don't tell him. <laughs> All right. We, um, we've had a long-standing member of our church that got some, some fairly hard news to hear this week. And Michael is going to stand instead for Tasha.
1 Samuel 2, 18 through 20 and 26. But Samuel was ministering before the Lord, a boy wearing a linen ephod. Each year his mother made him a little robe and took it to him when she went up with her husband to offer the annual sacrifice. Eli would bless Elkanah and his wife, saying, May the Lord give you children by this woman to take place of the one she prayed for and gave to the Lord. Then they would get home. And the boy Samuel continued to grow in statue and in favor with the Lord and with the people. Please rise in spirit and stand as you are able. For the good news this morning comes from the book of Luke, chapter 2, verses 41 through 52. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the festival of the Passover. When he was 12 years old, they went up to the festival according to the custom. After the festival was over, while his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. But they were unaware of it. Thinking he was in their company, they traveled on for a day. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and friends. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. After three days, they found him in the temple courts, sitting among the teachers, listening to them, and asking them questions. Everyone who heard him was amazed at his understanding and his answers. When his parents saw him, they were astonished. His mother said to him, Son, why have you treated us like this? Your father and I have been anxiously searching for you. Why were you searching for me, he asked. Didn't you know I had to be in my father's house? But they did not understand what he was saying to them. Then he went down to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them. But his mother treasured all these things in her heart. And Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, shepherds watch a key. Some of these people around here. 
Thank you, Miss Marty. That was lovely. Um, it's been a year. I was here last year at this time, doing the last Sunday um, for Holy Family Sunday. Uh, and it's good to be back. Uh, I hope uh, each one of you had a very Merry Christmas. And I hope you're looking forward to what God has in store for us in the year 2016. Uh, <clears throat> this is, uh, I want to read, before I go into the sermon, I want to read a cute little church event uh, that I had read the other day. Share that with you, if you don't mind. <clears throat> One Sunday morning, the pastor noticed little Alex was staring up at a large plaque that hung in the foyer of the church. The plaque was covered with names and small flags were mounted on either side of it. The seven-year-old had been staring at the plaque for some time, so the pastor walked up to him and stood beside him and said quietly, Good morning, Alex. Good morning, pastor, said Alex, he was still quite focused on that plaque, though. Pastor McGee, what is this? He asked. Well, son, it's a memorial to all of the men and women who died in the service. Well, soberly, they stood there together, and Alex's voice was barely audible when he asked, which service? The 9 o'clock or the 11 o'clock? <laughs> now, now in, to, in, to ensure we don't have to start a tradition of a plaque with, uh, in the foyer, in here, anything, uh, I have made a very short sermon so we can get through and get out of here without that, okay? Uh, <clears throat> and this, on this Holy Family Sermon, or ser Sunday, I've prepared a sermon that I've entitled the perfect model of faith. Would you pray with me, please? Loving and wonderful God, we thank you for the opportunity to celebrate your birth through the events of Christmas, as well as the lessons of hope, peace, joy, and love we experience during Advent. Let us now grow even more by finding ways to strengthen our individual faith journeys through your word, through our experiences with you, and learning from those around us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now, I don't know how many of you were here last week, but if you remember, uh, the pastor talked to us a little bit about uh, the strength of faith in Zechariah and Elizabeth and Mary, because... Of course, Elizabeth was given the opportunity to have, you know, have a child late in her life, and at the same time, Mary is pregnant with her child. And through all they went through in this, you know, they had to have a, a real strength of faith. Now, this week, our Old Testament reading shows the same strength of faith in Hannah and her first child. I mean, she had prayed for a long time for this child, but yet she had to give this child up. And I don't know if you know how, anything about the background of this, but uh, Samuel uh, had to do his spiritual journey in a town called Shiloh. And in, he stayed at the temple there in Shiloh. And if you're aware, that is where the Ark of the Covenant was. And that's where he slept, was near or by the Ark of the Covenant. And of course, as our scripture said, um, she took, Hannah took a robe up there to him. Now, this was not the ceremonial type robe, but the daily robe, you know. And each time she would go up there for the annual sacrifice, Eli would bless her and say, tell her that she would have more children. And I believe later on she had like five more children after uh, she had given up Samuel. So, 
But likewise, we find the same strength of faith in Mary as she experiences the beginnings in our second reading of losing her son to his journey, his mission that God had sent him for. Now, these losses certainly were not without their gains. And our scripture, if you notice the last verse in each one of the scripture readings, give us a little hint of that. It says, for in the Old Testament reading, the boy Samuel continued to grow in stature and favor with the Lord and with the people. Same thing in the New Testament. The last verse in there read, Jesus grew in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. I mean, this just works so perfectly with each other with the giving up of these two, two children. So Now, each of these individuals continue to grow and experience uh, the love and strength of faith that they had in each other within their families and with God. Uh, having said all this, now, God never told us, no matter how strong our faith was, that it would eliminate the trials and tribulations of life. Some of us think that once our faith gets really strong, that that person must be living a real easy life. You know? But trials and tribulations still come to us. Uh, it does provide us, however, with the assurance that no matter what comes before us, God is going to see us through. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the Holy Family here. Uh, put yourself in the shoes of Mary. Now, I know there are some of you out there that really want to be Mary, but uh, put yourself in the shoes of Mary and Joseph and baby Jesus. Uh, we can only imagine in society today what would be said in an unmarried situation if the child or child came home and told us that they were about to have a baby and then they turn and tell us and the angel said it came from the Holy Spirit. Now you can imagine all of the ramblings and goings on that might occur and what kind of test it might have given the family, Mary herself, even Joseph who was supposed to marry, marry her. But their strength of faith brought them together to go ahead and fulfill this mission that they were supposed to go through. Now then, put yourself in Joseph's shoes. Now Joseph is standing there saying, Oh, do I really want to do this? You know, do I really want to go through and uh, marry Mary at this time? He's saying, oh, I think I should divorce her in order to help minimize the shame and all that she might experience. But then, of course, an angel comes to him and tells him, no, this is okay. You need to go ahead and marry her. Uh, that God has anointed this, and this child is from the Holy Spirit. Of course, we see a strength of faith there again where they come together and they say, we're going to go ahead and see this through. Now, what about the birth itself? It was not without its own trials. They're headed... Uh, uh, you know, to Bethlehem, and they get there, and uh-oh, Mary is about to have her baby. They've got to find some place to stay. What do they do? They find no place in any inn, but they end up in a barn, in a manger, with these, all these animals around them. But they're not this way. Their strength of faith carries them through that. Now, let's fast forward about two years. Now, Jesus is now in trouble uh, with his life. Uh, Herod has decided that he's going to kill all of the 
children two years and younger because he's afraid of what is coming to pass with him. So what happens? And what would you do if your life were in danger, that you knew that the king was coming to take your child? They flee. Not just to another town a little ways away, but they flee to another country, which if my world geography is correct, to another continent as they go to Egypt. They, through all of this, you know their strength of faith had to be great to endure all of these different things that they're enduring. Now we're going to fast forward again to age 12. What's happening here? They make their trip, uh, and this is where, you know, they go for the annual Passover, you know, feast of the Passover and everything. And the Passover is, feast is over, and they all decide to go home. And if you remember in this situation, they're, they're not just this family walking and going home. This is a whole community of family and friends that are traveling to and from the feast. Well, they travel for a day with no question, but then they finally notice that Jesus isn't with them. And they begin looking to their friends and their family members trying to find where Jesus is. Well, he's nowhere to be found. So they spend three days looking for the baby Jesus. They finally find him, or not the baby Jesus, but the 12-year-old Jesus. To them, my mother still called me a baby when I was 50. Her baby, you know. So, But they finally find him in the temple, and, and Mary says to him, why would you do this to me and your father? Well, of course, you know, at age 12, what comes next is the terrible teens, you know. Uh, and this is bar mitzvah time. He is supposed to be coming, becoming a man now. And he looks to her with responding to her and saying, why would you be looking for me? You know I have to be about my father's business. Well, they don't even quite understand what he's saying at this time, you know. Uh, so, <clears throat> but Mary, like it says, Mary pondered this in her heart and went on and accepted this. Now, like any family, children create trials for us, you know. Um, but if we fast forward on from this point on to uh, Jesus' public ministry, we never hear anything else about Joseph. So Joseph, somewhere along this way, is presumed to have passed. And that in itself created bereavement for the family, requiring even a stronger faith for Mary to even keep the family together. <clears throat>
at what we've gone through and recognize that God got us through that. With God's help, we got through that. And if we begin to acknowledge each time God has gotten us through a circumstance, we grow in those acknowledgements. We learn to understand that we got through that. God let us get up and breathe one more day. God is giving us one more opportunity to shine that light to those we come in contact with. No matter what comes our way, we can make it through if we will just rely on that strength of faith that God gives us. And we need to test it more. We often sing a little song around here. It's called, I Know That I Can Make It. And it says, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. With Jesus, I can make it. With Jesus, I can stand. No matter what may come my way, my life is in your hand. Let's rise and sing that song, please.
prayer. I thank you for everyone in this congregation this morning. We just pray that these times and offerings be used to glorify you. Amen. Amen. The song the girls just sang <clears throat> had a line in it, Know that you are loved. As we prepare ourselves for the receiving of Holy Sacrament of Communion this morning, this is God's ever-present reminder to us just how much that he loved us. So let us prepare ourselves for the receiving of the Holy Sacrament of Communion as we say together our general confession. Let us pray. Loving God, we know that our faith may falter. Forgive us for our sins and help us to look to the perfect model of faith in the Holy Family and others around us to sustain a strong faith. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. We now pause to individually confess to you, Almighty God, those things that separate us from you, from others, and the best in ourselves. Would you join me now in a time of personal confession? Amen. Amen. Let us join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us, praying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us of our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God's love and forgiveness nurtures and strengthens our faith in order for us to be helped through difficult times. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, know to the heard each one of your confessions, and you are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Amen. Would you join me now in the liturgy of the great thanksgiving? God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let's give thanks to God. It is a right, a good and a joyful thing to always give thanks to you, Creator God. Therefore, we lift our voices with the angels and all of the company of heaven, heaven proclaiming your glory, singing. Jesus was to be given over to betrayal by the kiss of a friend. He called.
Now that you've heard the good news and have eaten at the table of blessed and hope, what will you do? We will keep our faith strong and make it through the difficult times. Praise God. And how will you do this? By knowing that you can depend on Jesus. Our song of celebration as we go forth and into this new year next year is you can depend on Jesus. Sometimes things don't always go the way we want them to. But as Joe told us this morning, we have an example in the Holy Family that even though sometimes your faith may get stretched and it may get used a lot, there's one thing you can depend on, and that is the love of God to see you through. So as you leave from here today, I hope from a staff and from our church is that you go into 2016 knowing that you are loved beyond measure yes. by God. Yes. If you would, would you repeat after me? May the Lord, May the Lord watch, between watch between me and thee, me and thee while, we're while we're absent, one from another. One from another. Amen. Amen. Thank you. 